Hello, if you've been wondering why the weather's been so bad this last week, well, you have me to thank. And that's because I've been purchasing some new gear, but not just any gear. This is forbidden gear. And that is to say, it's stuff that you can't buy here in the UK or US for a number of different reasons I'm gonna explain shortly. But I thought I'd make this video because some of this stuff has some really cool and unique features that we haven't seen before in astrophotography. And I'm really excited to try it out for myself. The products we're going to be looking at today include the Skywatcher HAC125 telescope, as well as the brand new TubeTech Astro Station. This is an ASI Air replacement. We also have the Jouet 17 strain wave mount and Celestron, have made a second entry into the refractor market. This is the smallest model of their yet to be announced telescopes. So let's get stuck in. I'm Damon Scotting and this is Astronomical. Right, so the first piece of gear that I want to start off talking about is perhaps the most exciting of them all, and that is the Skywatcher HAC125. So let's focus solely on this. This is a fairly unique looking telescope, especially because if I take this off, you will be greeted by a very weird nose sticking out from the front end of the telescope. Now, it's very similar in design to a Brasa telescope, whereas this is a HAC, which stands for Honda's Advanced Camera. The diameter of this little scope is 125 millimeters, which puts it at five inches in terms of aperture. This value is slightly reduced in terms of light gathering capabilities because you have obstruction with the camera mount just here. And therein lies one of the biggest issues to do with this telescope. I'm not gonna to get too heavy into it because I'm gonna make its own review video, but I think why the manufacturers have deemed this product to be a failure before it's even hit the markets is due to this. All the light that you're trying to gather from deep sky objects is going to be coming in in this direction. So it's a huge issue to be blocking a big portion of that when you're putting your camera inside here. Now, if I put any one of our traditional cameras or, or in an even worse case scenario, a cooled deep sky camera, then it's gonna take up a lot more volume in fact, if I put my ASI 2600 in here, I'm pretty sure it'd block out almost all of the light that was entering into the telescope. So in order to get around this, the only cameras that you can use within this telescope are those that are known as lipstick cameras. Now in my hand here, I have the ASI 120 mini. This is a monochrome camera. And I was going to use this to start taking images, but I decided that I want to use the best possible lipstick camera that I could find in the market, which led me to the QHY5 Mark III 585C. So this is the same sensor inside here as used in the Player One Uranus color camera and the ASI 585. It's very good. It records 4K videos up to 47 frames per second, I believe, and the pixel size is 2.9 micrometers. It's ideal for both deep sky imaging as well as planetary imaging. Now, with such a short focal length on this telescope, 250 millimeters, you're not gonna be using it for imaging the planets, even though I have tried to do so, and this is what I managed to turn up. The main focus is going to be imaging the deep sky. Now, the key point that I want to get across here is that because its aperture is 125 millimeters and its focal length is 250, the focal ratio is two, which makes this one of the fastest telescopes in the world. So the part that I find really exciting about this isn't looking at planets, it's not even imaging deep sky objects, it's using it as a live feed for viewing our night sky. Unfortunately, I've already had the chance to test it out for myself over the course of two nights. And I've taken videos of double stars, star clusters, galaxies. Basically anything that takes your fancy in a night sky can be captured with this telescope. I know on the surface of it, 250 millimeters focal length sounds really short, but when you're using a camera like this, your final field of view is quite narrow. So the bottom line when it comes to this telescope is that it is incredibly impressive, especially when it's currently on the market for 499 British pounds. Now I purchased it for a similar value from the website AliExpress. It took about three weeks to actually arrive here, but now that it is, I cannot stop using it. I'm obsessed with what this is capable of capturing. Likewise, with the rest of these products, I'm not going to do a full review in this video because I haven't captured enough with any of them. We've had clouds now for about a week and it looks like the next clearest night is going to be in six nights time. So I figured in the meantime, I'd share with you all this stuff that I'm really excited about. Next up, we have the Astro Station from TubeTech. Noisy buggers. So this is TubeTech's own variation on a mini astrophotography computer. Now you may be thinking that this looks rather familiar and that's because it is almost a carbon copy of the ASI, that was really loud, the ASI Plus. And as it currently stands, it is priced at a similar amount. I'm just gonna do a quick rotation of each of these mini computers, just so you can get an idea of what they look like in their full volume. 
and the one main difference that you're going to have noticed already is that the ASI Air Plus from now on is decided we're going to stop including that micro SD card port so you can have expandable storage. We're just going to have the PC port, whereas TubeTech has said we're going to keep it and we're going to make it an SD card port instead. Now, people have been dreaming of a product like the Astro Station for a long time now, and that's due to the fact that the ASI Air Plus, regardless of how incredible it is, has a really frustrating flaw, and that is it's limited to products from within the ZWO sphere. My point being is that I wouldn't be able to use this QHY camera with the ASI Air Plus. In fact, the only cameras I can use with it are ZWO cameras. So that's frustrating enough, but then even stuff like focuses, electronic focuses, I've got a number of TubeTech focuses and I've also got a couple of ZWO, but I can only use ZWO with this. So to explain it briefly, this is an incredible product, but because you can only use specific products with it, it's very frustrating for us astrophotographers because it means that we have to continue buying ZWO stuff. ZWO stuff is of course very good. That's not a slight against them at all. Their products are incredible but at the same time it's nice to have a bit of freedom especially in this instance where ZWO don't have an appropriate substitute for a lipstick camera that would fit this telescope but the Astro Station allows basically everything now I only had one chance to use it so far and from what I can see the interface is very well laid out but it does need some getting used to the fact that I can combine it with all sorts of equipment that I have is an absolute game changer and I'm really looking forward to it because these mini computers are very handy now the really big issue that I made when I purchased this was I realized because I bought it from some third party they weren't directly affiliated with tube tech which meant it didn't have a link to the mobile app on their web page which is very frustrating because it kind of meant I can't control this from my phone, which is the main point of it. So I did have to message TubeTech directly and it sent me a direct link to download the app. So it's very clear that this is in the early stages of release. It's coming soon to the wider public. There's nothing limiting it from going out yet. It's just they're doing a slow rollout to make sure that everything is working fine. Then moving on to the Jouet 17 harmonic drive mount. Now these last few years, strain wave mounts have basically become the big thing. And with good reason, they are far more lightweight compared to their equatorial mount comparisons. They are incredibly lightweight, yet capable of handling very heavy payloads without the need for an additional counterweight. So that for me is the biggest selling point. The only issue is they are, like most mounts, very expensive. In fact, my go-to example for one of the best strain wave mounts on the market is the AM5. That is currently priced at $2,000. Whereas a Jouet 17 mount I was able to purchase on AliExpress for just under $1,000 US dollars. So I got it for half the price and it has essentially the same specifications of the AM5. So your immediate thought has to be, what's wrong? <laughs> what is the major flaw in this mount? Well, as of yet, I still don't know. I've used it for one imaging session and that was to image Comet Sushinshan Atlas very briefly for about 45 minutes, but it was super simple to set up and it handled it very nicely. I'm also pretty sure it takes the exact same payloads as the AM5 mount, which means without a counterweight, it can take about 13 kilograms. With the help of a counterweight, you can take up to 20 kilograms. So it's very clear and obvious to see that strain wave mounts are the future of astrophotography mounts. The question is how cheap and viable can they become? Because if this functions at a similar level to the AM5 or even the AM3 mount, and it's available for 1,000 US dollars, then everyone is gonna be all over it. And then lastly, I've saved something that I was actually incredibly surprised to find. So obviously when I'm on the website AliExpress, I'm looking at all these different telescope gear, I get recommended different kinds of stuff. And then I saw this Celestron Refractor Telescope. And my immediate thought was, that's fake. Now Celestron have released their own refractor range before. This is long in the past. And if you search online now, looking for Celestron's new refractor range of telescopes, you won't see anything from Celestron that's been released. They haven't announced that this is coming out yet. But with that being said, if you go onto the product page of shops that are selling this telescope, you will see some very official looking advertising documents and images that showcase the features of this telescope. So I do believe that it is a telescope that is going to be released by Celestron in the future but again it's just it's very early stages um, okay the question is are the celestial refractor telescopes going to be better than any other telescopes on the market oh this stop and that question again remains to be seen because i'm yet to test this out all i can say is stay tuned for the full review of each of these videos i figured this was just worth making as a short video right now because I'm really excited to try all of these things out. If you want to learn more, and when I say more, I mean a limited amount of information more about each of these products, then I've attached links to each of them in the description below. Thanks for watching. I'm Damon Scotting, and this was Astronomical.